Thank you for joining us on the Passive Accredited Investor Show. We are Carolina Capital Management. We are lenders in the Southeast. If you are a uh, borrower and you would like to borrow money for a, uh, what is it? Investor property. <laughs> Go to carolinahardmoney.com, click on the apply now tab. And if you are a passive investor and you're looking for passive returns, click on the accredited investor tab. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, and don't forget to sign up for Wednesdays with Wendy. Wendy uh, actually uh, devotes Wednesdays. So she's given 30 minutes of her time to each person uh, on the schedule that day to talk about anything real estate. Uh, it's pretty, pretty cool. You get on a zoom call or FaceTime or just a regular phone call, uh, but she'll, she'll talk about anything real estate uh, related to you. Uh, you can book with her on the link there and on the screen or over there in the, <coughs> excuse me, the cop <coughs> got all choked up the comment section on the right hand side or underneath, uh, depending on the platform you're viewing us from. And by the way, I'm mentioning the comment section. So uh, feel free to free to comment. Uh, by the way, uh, can you guys hear us? Okay. Uh, if, if so, just put a little comment in there. Yeah. You sound great or no you sound like crap. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, there's a comment. I don't. I don't suggest uh, clicking the link, but uh, it says yourdreams.online. You shouldn't probably click that. <laughs> well, it depends on the dream, I guess. <laughs> Everyone has their own. Uh, so, as I mentioned, okay, thank you. Uh, as I mentioned, all right, Elizabeth, thank you. Um, I mentioned we're in. Uh, well, I'm in Orlando, Wendy went to Las Vegas and she went to another mastermind. And if you know, Wendy, it has to be a good mastermind because she hates Las Vegas. She, <laughs> you, you have to take her there kicking and screaming, but uh, she, lo she loves the content that she gets at the mastermind. So she went anyway. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was a good one. Yeah. She, she brought me back a, a nice cup. So I get a, Oh, you got a cup. Me. I know I it know. wasn't filled with coins. It was actually filled with pre-workout. So, oh, well, that's okay. Um, those those guys are famous for their their pre-workout drinks. Yeah, it's a uh, bucked up or something. Yeah. 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 That's, remember, I got some of that. And uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, aren't you on your way to Philadelphia? <laughs> that's that's our brother, Mark. We're all going to a a wedding for our cousin. Uh, in Philadelphia on Friday. That should be a blast. Anyway, well, that bucked up stuff is uh, got a lot of stimulant in it. I, I drank some for the first time before a boot camp class on a Wednesday night. And I don't think I got to sleep until Friday afternoon. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, I, I tell, us that about, tell us about some, uh, cause you, you are at the collective genius right now. Tell us some of the, the takeaways or some of the stuff that you've learned or the interesting insights that you've gained since you've been there. Cause you've been there all week. Yeah. I, I got here Sunday night and they, they start off on, on Monday. Uh, what we do is we spend uh, seven hours and we had uh, five breakout rooms. That's how many folks we have now. So we had five rooms, half the room had to give a 20 minute presentation uh, about you know, either they're, you know, what's going on in their business or something new uh, or just something they wanted to share. And what, what stuck out um, the most with me in my breakout room was Paul Moore. Uh, if you guys don't know Paul Moore, he runs a, a fund that is uh, mainly multifamily and self storage. Uh, they have about a uh, 70, $80 million fund. And his talk was on the professional investor, the investor who has money and, 
and their view is I have money. I want to make sure I keep it. Principal and, preservation. Yeah. Yes. And so the, the topic or the, the title of his um, presentation was the boring investor. And they're happy with five, six, seven, eight percent. If you present them with a 11, 12 percent return, they're thinking, you know, well, this investment is just way too risky. Too risky. Yeah. I mean, I've had that exact conversation with someone. You know, you mentioned like a, you know, a high number. And it's like, ooh, that sounds dangerous. Yeah. Right. Well, you have to dig into the numbers. There, there are ways to get uh, high returns and still be relatively safe. For, for example, if uh, you're in a fund that allows you to compound over time while the uh, initial investment or the, the quarterly returns uh, are, are going to be, you know, in the single digits over time, as you can compound the, that, those balances, uh, you can certainly get a much, much higher uh, rate of return. But the vast majority of, the, of funds, especially the ones that hold property, uh, they don't tend to uh, compound your returns. They're paying you out uh, income. As well, they family. can't they can't compound if they're holding or they can, but it's un unlikely because they have to maintain a certain cash flow and liquidity level. Right. Right. Yeah. So it, it's very difficult for that. But but I like the, the premise that um, the, the more money that you have, uh, the less you're chasing yield. Uh, now, that's not going to help someone who's a little behind on the um, retirement uh, build up. Sure. And there's a lot of those people that are behind from 2008. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. if you've lost a lot uh, during that time, you're still trying to catch up. And then again, at the same time, if you're fairly young, uh, it's okay to have a certain part of your portfolio that's risky because mm -hmm. you can make up for it. You still have time. So he was talking about these, you know, these, was he talking about how to target them or what did that like? What, what no, was he was ma mainly talking uh, about uh, how they, and yeah, I guess it does have to do a little bit with targeting uh, as far as the marketing piece and, mm -hmm. and letting, letting us know, because most of us in the room are, trying to raise capital for, you know, our real estate businesses. And uh, he's just letting you know out there, if you, uh, there's a certain segment of the population that uh, if you give them all these high numbers, they're, they're going to think uh, your investment is too risky. Sure. Uh, so there's a different way to uh, market to those folks. Yeah. Uh, you have, you have growth and then you have preservation. I mean, those are two completely different people. Yeah. Well, you know, they're very high caliber people in the room and the vast majority of the presentations were, we've done very well. How do I minimize my taxes now? <laughs> so, we've but, done very well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's been a really good market. Yes. Um, but great markets uh, always end up having poor markets in the future. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, always. Uh, I know you hate always. Um, typically um, <laughs> you're going to have a downturn in the market coming at some point because yeah. all markets are secular and we, we are secular, secular, secular. secular yeah. We're, you know, we've, we've been on a, a long real estate run, but I can tell you right now, uh, there's still a, a housing shortage. People mm. still need a place to live. So, it's going to continue for a little while. And I was touching this on our last show. There's a heck of a lot more competition out there now because the institutional investors, they're looking for yield and um, they are tearing it up out here, buying houses right and left. And by the way, they don't care about buying a house for more than it's worth right now because they're looking five to seven years down the road. And that thing is going to continue to give them income and it's going to go up in value. Yep. Absolutely. So uh, I'm not saying this to scare folks uh, in the, that are uh, mom and pops like the rest of us, but you just need to be aware of it and, you know, figure out ways to work with them and then leverage what it is that they're doing. You know, the, 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 the advice that I, you know, 
you know, prescribe for myself and, and I, I hand out to whoever asked for it is utilize them. Don't rely on them. Right. And that's, that's the difference. Um, utilize right. those, uh, those, uh, people in the market or those institutions that are coming in, um, to help, um, create additional revenue streams for your company or for yourself or what have you, but don't pigeonhole yourself into relying on them to feed a machine that you're now creating or to be the, you know, your only capital source. That is a recipe for disaster. Ask anyone who's been in real estate for more than 10 years. Yeah. Now here's another thing uh, that uh, along those same lines, uh, you need to diversify your uh, income streams as well. Uh, there was uh, some statistics that were quoted about uh, a couple of these uh, big home buyers, institutional home buyers. And oh, by the way, it, they, they buy in, in one name and then they have four or five other companies that they're buying in, the, in those names, but they're all the same company. Mm -hmm. uh, they're buying in different entities, but they spent uh, in the, I think it was the month of November, this one company spent $27 million in assignment fees. So they've, they're, <laughs> they're finding, they're, they're finding wholesalers to uh, find homes for them. And they spent mm -hmm. $27 million in a month in assignment fees. But there's another company called Sundance uh, that's out there talking about how evil the wholesalers are and that, you know, we're the trusted alternative, blah, 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 but they're doing, still doing the same thing. Yeah. They just got an $80 million infusion of cash on around the funding that they did through wall street. And do you think they could take $27 million of that and just use it for marketing instead of paying assignment fees? <laughs> Yeah, you, know, you know, yeah, they're they're trying to demonize the the wholesaler, um, and you know, just like every other industry, there are a few bad eggs for sure. But all in all, the majority of wholesalers that we've worked with or that we know are, you know, very stand up, very reputable. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, and, and and that gets me to my next presentation, and it was by uh, Eli Fisher. And his uh, presentation was on, you know, dictating your narrative and telling your story because like this company Sundance, they're telling a story about you. You need to, you need to tell your story first. Mm -hmm. uh, it needs to be about uh, helping people that listen, we, the vast majority of the collective genius folks are wholesalers mm -hmm. and I've seen firsthand on what they do for their teams, their communities. Uh, there was an example on Monday where this wholesaler uh, not only uh, helped the family get out of a upcoming foreclosure by buying their home and they got it at a decent price. Don't get me wrong, but they took a, a portion of the profits that they made. They went and bought a pretty nice single wide mobile home. Some of their, uh, pe people on their team actually donated more money and labor to m help them move to this new single wide mobile home. And they gave it to them free and clear. So they wouldn't have these financial problems again. See, that's awesome. I love yeah, that. But you're, you're not going to hear about that because uh, all wholesalers are evil. <laughs> they're, they're just there to, uh, use pred predatory, uh, ways to take your home from you. No, I, you know, the, the, there are good wholesalers and bad, just like I said, sure. you know, there's bad eggs, but the good wholesalers are far outweigh the bad. And most of them, like they are problem solvers. They are helping you solve a problem for the, as the, you know, for the, the seller. And then they're helping the buyer who, you know, could be another uh, end user or it could be an investor and they're helping them, you know, either get inventory or find a final home. So yeah. I, I get why you said it was called Sundance. Sundance is yeah. Uh, Sundance is trying to demonize them to create you know to create more market uh, share for themselves. But um, you know, wholesalers all in all are you know they're they're problem solvers. Yeah, well, I can tell you most of these companies that are coming out of Silicon Valley are 
are trying to, they're, you know, they have the money for the marketing, they're rewriting the narrative. Um, uh, they're, they're, they're going to try to get rid of all the realtors, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like Zillow is doing <laughs> yeah. and they're trying to get rid of all the wholesalers. They just want to, you know, corner the market and do everything digitally. Uh, well, they, everyone wants, you know, all those eye buyers, they're all trying to do the same thing, yeah. become one stop shop where the, the, the person never has to go anywhere else for anything, selling their home, buying a home, um, you know, contract for deed, you know, whatever the case may be, they never have to go anywhere else. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Um, all right. So later on in the day, uh, our good friend, Dr. David Phelps did a presentation on uh, how to couple your branding with lead generation uh, to exponentially add uh, a, a, a legacy uh, to your business. Um, and, you know, how much is too much and what do you do with it later? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that kind of thing. But David's team does a great job of targeting their avatar um, and then taking them through uh, that pipeline, if you will, and um, turning them into raving fans before they even agree to join. And I tell you, David has a, a mastermind and uh, the mastermind is uh, private practice professionals mm -hmm. and they have to pay uh, a pretty penny to get into his group. And uh, the, the way they have put their marketing together to create that tribe. And uh, you and I learned this uh, when we were uh, down at uh, Roy Williams um, in Austin, Texas, a, a few years ago. Yeah, the Wizard Academy. Yeah, it, it's not about being the cheapest, uh, and I don't want to say the cheapest, being the least expensive, having the most marketing, your brand should be something that, uh, that, that connects you with others and, yeah. uh, your story. When we go back to um, creating your narrative, it's all about that branding. Your branding is, is your story. Well, and to take it, you know, like, I think a lot of people, they understand like, like finding out who's your avatar. But I think that what sets David um, apart from a lot of other people is he doesn't not he, not, he not only knows who his avatar is, he deeply understands them, sure. what makes them tick. Um, so, well, that's true because he used to be, in he used to be a, a dentist, but that like, that's what I, I guess I wanted to, to build on that. I was like, un knowing who your avatar is great but understanding them, that's how you build a brand because you understand their needs, their wants, their desires, what motivates them, what demotivates them. Um, so you really have to get granular into all those aspects of your avatar. Well, yes. And, and how do you, what's the easiest way to get avatars you understand? Ones uh, that are hey. like you. That, that yes. Mm -hmm. And this is where your story comes in. You tell your story, you'd be shocked at how many people have similar backgrounds and believe in similar things. So do not try to be everything to everyone, be who you are and you will attract uh, plenty of people that are just like you, that will be raving fans because um, they, they trust you. They like you because uh, they are like you. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's amazing how that works. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, even the differences between you and me, Bill, there are people who really, really, you know, are drawn to you because you have more of the, the feels and the, you know, the emotional uh, intelligence and they think I'm a crook <laughs> because, yeah. because I don't, I don't, I don't have that, but I have people who are more, yeah, but you have you have people that are, are very analytical. Uh, mm -hmm. I would say, uh, and and I'm not I'm not trying to pigeonhole people, but fo folks that uh, are more uh, engineer type personalities, right? Yeah, they're going to draw more to you than they are to me because I'm 
I'm kind of a, a big picture, touchy feely guy. You're the guy that is yeah. all about the data. And yeah, I, so I, that's, I, that's why it's also important. Even when you create your avatar, you want to know, you know, you have, you have the, the face of the company, whatever, or the, whatever you're doing, who is talking to your avatar is very important. If, if we're creating an, an avatar that is attracted to Bill, having me talk to them is not the best, <laughs> the best idea. <laughs> um, and that leads me into the, the, the final speaker who was uh, Frank Kearns. Uh, if you're not familiar with Frank, you don't do much on the, uh, tell Dion to stop calling me during the show. Um, <laughs> the, uh, Frank, if, if you don't know who Frank is, you don't do a lot of digital marketing stuff on the internet because he is, he is everywhere. Um, uh, Frank was doing a presentation on social marketing and how to get, uh, basically how to get people to come to your site through social media. And by the way, he says he never does anything on social media other than post. He will never read anything on social media. He hates it. <laughs> He also, as much as he's out in the public too, he's also went, he's been tested kind of like Sheldon Cooper on big bang. He, you know, his mom had him tested. Yeah. He, uh, he's been tested and he's definitely an antisocial individual. <laughs> and he gave us a two hour uh, presentation yesterday. So for someone who's antisocial, he did a pretty good job. Um, but, um, the, the essence of what he is talking about is posting on uh, Instagram, Facebook, those types of things and do it consistently. And, and um, there was a couple of different um, things that matter to people. Um, emotions. Uh, why does this matter? Um, and then he'll, he sat down and gave us a, uh, and then connection. Uh, he, he, he sat down and gave us a connection framework. And so I, I tried a posting um, based on what he was giving us. And we're about to run out of time, but I, I tried a posting. And one of them was the um, inspirational quote. So I, I posted an inspirational quote on our, on our page uh, about an hour before the show. And then as I, I came on, um, and, and again, you know, we don't, we don't have a, a huge audience. And one thing, you're not looking for likes. You're looking yeah. for engagements. And I had 36 engagements and seven shares within an hour. Of wow. this, just a, I had a, I posted a, and here's what I did. I went to Google and I Googled inspirational quotes. <laughs> really hard, huh? And then I hit images. And this is one of the things Frank taught is you don't want to have to write your own quote. But click the image because most of those images have the quote right there. Yeah, and I, did. I posted a picture of Dwayne Johnson with his his quote. And then I just commented on the quote, uh, added my two cents worth and then asked, well, what do you think? Yeah. And that way you get people to reply. So you're getting engagements, you're getting likes, you're getting shares. Uh, you're not looking for uh, followers. And the way the algorithms work in Instagram and Facebook is the more uh, that your post is engaging, the more they'll start putting out in front of those people that, um, you know, ha have commented on it or engaged in it. They're going to send it out to more of those folks. Yeah, exactly. And, and then as an ad campaign, if you're looking at these, you see which ones work and, and the ones that get the most engagement, then you just take that same thing. You don't have to do anything else. Just turn it into an ad and then put some sort of an offer at the bottom. Speaking of offers, uh, we were launch, launching a new fund. It, it will be available uh, probably by the end of uh, next week to get started with. Um, it's going to be a little over $3 million raise. And mm -hmm. it's going to be on multifamily. Um, if you want details, uh, email Jonathan at Jonathan at CarolinaHardMoney.com. Jonathan at CarolinaHardMoney.com. He can give you all the information for it. We'll have it available. Uh, we'll do a, a webinar on it here shortly. Yep, absolutely. 
that said, uh, folks, we are definitely out of time. Thanks for joining us on the accredited investor show. Uh, we are Carolina capital management. I'm sorry, the passive accredited investor show, but we are uh, Carolina capital management. How long have we been doing this? <laughs> Um, we are Carolina Capital Management. We are lenders in the Southeast for real estate investors. If you're interested in borrowing money, go to carolinahardmoney.com and click on the uh, apply now tab. If you are a passive investor looking for passive returns, click on the accredited investor tab. <clears throat> I'm all choked up again. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell. And sign up with Wednesdays with Wendy.